Hey guys, welcome to the Liberal Hive Mind, a channel solely focused on exposing the abundant hypocrisy of the left. What happened, leftoids? I mean, just last week you were going on and on and on about New York's 19th congressional district and just how good Democrats were doing in the polls. I mean, in some cases, almost going as far to claim that Democrats are essentially a shoe in to win the Senate and probably not even lose the House by that much. Some people even claiming that the Democrats are going to win the House. Headlines like this kept popping up everywhere. An invisible army of pro-abortion voters voters will save the Democrats says Michael Tomaski. Democrats, especially last week, have been so confident, and then all of a sudden the confidence just evaporates, as I guess reality starts to sink in, and the mainstream media is already changing their tune, stating the obvious, that Republicans are still poised for a landslide victory, and that Democrats are going to have to do a whole lot more to turn this whole thing around. It's the common ebbs and flows of the Democrat mainstream media cycle. Push hopium and copium, and then of course, reality starts to settle and oh boy is it already settling let me show you guys what's going on here let's take a look at what the New York Times is saying and then we'll delve into some of the most important races we've got some stuff to get into friends so let's roll the tape all right folks take a look at this from the Daily Wire New York Times polls may be headed for another major miss overstating Democrat support in battleground states you think the New York Times chief political analyst said Monday that the 2022 midterms may be yet another massive miss for the polling industry Democrats have been surging in the polls in several key battleground states, but in the article entitled, Yes, the Polling Warning Signs Are Flashing Again, New York Times chief political analyst, Nate Cohn, said that the same errors in data collection that vastly overstated Democrats' support in the 2020 election are cropping up again in the same areas in recent polling, meaning that Democrats may not be as strong as the polls indicate. I mean, yeah, obviously, because absolutely nothing has changed. We've been delving into some polls that are sampling 16% more Democrats than they are Republicans, and also totally oversampling independents, and even suggesting that independents are shifting leftward. A completely absurd notion in this political environment. Nothing has changed in the polling industry from 2016 to now. Let's continue the article. Cohn began his article with a data table from 2020 showing the gap between the media and university polling data and the actual election results in 11 battleground states. Among the most egregious errors, in Wisconsin, President Joe Biden had a 10-point advantage over former President Donald Trump in a statewide polling average. Biden won the state by less than one point, a nine-point miss. And of course, again, this is exactly what we keep mentioning. I mean, let's go to the Arizona Senate race, for instance. Back in 2020, you had Martha McSally versus Mark Kelly. And of course, Martha McSally was a pretty weak candidate. The RCP average ahead of the election showed Kelly winning by nearly six percentage points. But in the end, he only won by 2.4. It was a three percentage point plus miss, meaning the only polling outlet that actually hit the nail on the head was Emerson. Well, now we have Mark Kelly versus versus Blake Masters, the average sits at a plus four for Mark Kelly, but of course his lead continues to shrink. Blake Masters is rising in the polls, he's a much better candidate than Martha McSally, and there's a very decent chance that Blake Masters, especially in a Republican-favored environment like we're currently in, wins this election by one to three percentage points, I'd probably estimate. And this is the exact kind of arithmetic that I've been doing. I mean, for instance, Mr. New York Cone mentioned the polling error in Wisconsin, a nine-point polling miss, and this is why I find it completely laughable when Democrats tell me that Ron Johnson is going to lose in the state of Wisconsin. Give me a break. I just don't believe it. You have to take the polling data with a grain of salt, and then you have to add at least maybe three to six percentage point for whatever the Republican candidate is, depending on the battleground state. And that's just the polling data. There's a whole lot more to account for than just the polling miss. There's very important factors, little nuances in every single race. For instance, right back to Arizona, the Carrie Lakes versus Katie Hobbs race, we're a little bit over two months away from election day, and Katie Hobbs just made her decision public that she is outright refusing to debate Carrie Lake ahead of the election. Democrat Katie Hobbs says she won't debate Republican Carrie Lake for Arizona governor. Well, already Carrie Lake is taking advantage of this. For the first time in the history of our state, there will be no clean elections gubernatorial debate. Bucking state tradition, my opponent, Katie Hobbs has made it official. She will not share a debate stage with me under any circumstance. To be honest, I'm not entirely thrilled with the idea of sharing a debate stage with a twice convicted racist like Katie Hobbs. I have made it abundantly clear that I would do so because the Arizona voters deserve nothing less than to hear from both of us. Now I'd like to speak directly to you, Katie. You think this issue is going to go away. 
that Arizonans will just throw up their hands and say, oh, well, no debate this year. Well, you're sorely mistaken. I have asked the Clean Elections Commission to extend the deadline for you to confirm your attendance to the day of the debate. Should you grow a spine between now and October 12th, there will be an empty chair waiting for you on the debate stage. I hope to see you there, Katie. That's going to be disastrous for Katie Hobbs' image. The debate is still going to happen, except it's going to be Carrie Lake standing on that stage alone and an empty seat or an empty podium representing Katie Hobbs. From my perspective, Carrie Lake is already winning. If you look at the polling data, they're in a statistical tie, but Carrie Lake is an Arizona superstar. She's a familiar face to Arizona households across the state, having worked in the media. She's also running a tremendous campaign, and everybody's talking about her. It's a Republican favorite environment, she's winning with independents and undecided voters. Republican voter enthusiasm is, of course, through the roof. This election is going to be a referendum on Joe Biden's failed presidency. And then on top of that, Katie Hobbs is too much of a coward to defend her record, and she's not going to show up to the debate, and Carrie Lake is going to get incredible press and incredible optics for her campaign. In my mind, there is no way Carrie Lake doesn't win this election. There's a lot of factors here that copium Democrats are not paying attention to. They're thinking, oh, we're up in the polls, therefore, but that's That's not the way that it works. And that's especially true when you have all of these garbage polling firms like NPR, Politico, Morning Consult, and YouGov oversampling Democrats by egregious amounts. And so the copium and the hopium is slowly ending. As the closer you get to election day, Democrats are forced to confront reality. And all of a sudden, it's total panic mode as the New York Times is ringing the alarm bell, sounding off the alarm, yelling from the mountaintops that the polls might miss once again. Yeah, no sh**. Sherlock. And speaking of reality hitting them in the face and panic starting to settle in, the Washington Post editorial board is now blasting John Fetterman, demanding a full release of his medical records. All of a sudden, Democrats are panicking that John Fetterman might lose the Pennsylvania Senate race because he's not in good health. I mean, look, I'm going to say it again. I wish John Fetterman a full recovery. I don't wish anything bad on the man. But just take a look at his most recent event with Steelworkers. Steelworkers! Steel workers, what an honor it is to be here with you today. Just earlier today, I was so proud to march with you in downtown Pittsburgh. Labor Day, happy Labor Day. You know, how many homes does Dr. Oz have? Nine, 10, 11? The simple fact of the matter is, John Fetterman has a poll ceiling of 48 percentage points as Red Eagle Politics continues to point out in his videos. That might be his cap, and he might not even hit that 48%. The closer you get to election day, the more Oz is going to surge, and the more the Republican base and independents start coming together and supporting Dr. Oz, which is inevitable at this point, it's gonna happen, the more Dr. Oz is going to surge, and if John Fetterman doesn't show up to a debate because he's clearly not healthy, and the more people get a glimpse into his current state of health, the more he's going to drop in the polls. He might be ahead by four points, six points, nine points in the polls that we're seeing now, but that's not going to last and it's probably not going to represent the actual reality, the actual results that we see on election day. We know this to be the case. It's undeniable. You cannot argue against it. There's too much historical data suggesting Republicans are always underestimated in the midterms, especially with the Democrat candidates. And I don't think that the year 2022 is going to be any different or break any of these norms. In fact, I think the polls might be spectacularly wrong this time, and Republicans might just land a crushing victory. And it seems like Democrats are finally starting to realize that. That's what I got for you guys, though. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to leave a like and possibly subscribe to the channel if you're up for it. I'm going to get back to work. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.